In Jesus Christ, God reaches out to everyone to call them home. And here at Willow Glen UMC, we open our hearts and intentionally welcome you into our home, into our church family, and into a closer relationship with God. We celebrate God's gift of diversity and value the wholeness made possible in community equally shared and shepherded by all. We welcome and affirm people of every gender identity, gender expression, and sexual orientation who are also of every age, race, ethnicity, physical and mental ability, level of education and family structure, and of every economic, immigration, marital and social status, and so much more. We acknowledge that we live in a world of profound social, economic, and political inequities. As followers of Jesus, we commit ourselves to the pursuit of justice and pledge to stand in solidarity with all who are marginalized and oppressed. The Jesus we know already loves you, and that is what we are here to do. I know with the opportunity to get to know you and worship with you. Listen, share, and grow in God's love with you. The wider we draw the circle of grace, the more we know and experience the love of God. And now we invite you to be in worship with us. As you listen to the gathering music, we encourage you to take deep breaths, to leave behind your worries, to be mindful of God's blessings upon your life. An attitude of gratitude is one of the best ways to encounter God. So we also invite you to take this moment of reflection and prayer to think about all that you are thankful for. Welcome to worship.
Good morning. I am Jay Parr, lead pastor here at Willow Glen United Methodist Church. So glad you could join us for worship this morning. We want to give a special welcome to any guests that we might have. We are thrilled that you're here with us today. We like to say that no matter who you are, no matter where you are in your life journey, you are absolutely welcome here. So we're going to start out with just a few announcements. And the first announcement is be in prayer for Mike Calla, our music director. Uh, he's not here this morning. He's just not feeling well. And so uh, let us hold in prayer Mike to feel better. And then thank you very much, Lori Lindsay, who... Can you imagine getting a text at 7 a.m.? Oh, by the way, would you mind, right? Lori, thank you. Wow. All right, and I invite Kendra to come forward, please, for another announcement. Please. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Come on up. Good morning. I normally have a loud voice. Um, our rummage sale is fast approaching. It's now September 1st, and our rummage sale is Saturday the 14th, so in two weeks. Um, we are very thankful that we have a full staff for Saturday. So it, that doesn't mean that you, you if you want to come, please come. There's always something to do. Oh, but you find a job. Yeah, but you guys have done an amazing job of giving us the uh, volunteer hours that we need for Saturday. And so we're still going to pass around our clipboard for the, let's see, we've got Thursday, the whatever that day is, the Thursday before Saturday, where as people are bringing in their items, we want to get it sorted, and we're looking at sorting and pricing. And then on, and that'll happen all day. So from nine, we have shifts from nine in the morning until 8 p.m. 8 p.m. And then on Friday, we will, I'll let you talk about Friday. Oh, sure. Okay, okay. So on Friday, we have the same opportunity to do a little sorting, pricing, helping people um, distribute their items in the morning. And then in the evening, we have some brand new volunteer shifts. So I'm sure you're all gonna be super excited, but. During the dinner, we need some folks to help with serving and putting out the food. And um, we also have a few shifts for bakers. So if you are interested in helping bake some brownies, cookies, cupcakes, small, um, not big elaborate cakes, but just small like bite size items that handheld, handheld desserts, exactly. Please still buy a ticket and join us for the dinner, but we do need some help that night. So, the, it's going around. I've had a conversation with uh, someone. If transportation is your barrier for making it to the dinner, please reach out to us and we will make sure that uh, you have transportation because we would love to have you there. So, yeah. So the clipboard's coming around, and while that happens, um, we have a little rummage sale top 10 today. So number 10, next slide. We're going to click through them super fast. Please call or email Jan Leonard in the back there if you need help with a large item pickup next Saturday. Number nine. Save your shopping bags and large boxes. I know people are doing it, they're talking about it, but we need as many bags and boxes as possible. Number eight, please plan for about 30 to 60 minutes for dropping off your items and helping sort and distribute them throughout Colstead into the right departments, depending on how much stuff you have. Number seven, please sign up to help on Thursday and Friday, which is what we just talked about. Number six, buy tickets for the pre-sale dinner and auction on Friday the 13th. It's not scary this year. Number five, help spread the word. We've got flyers. We've got posters. You can post on social media. Number four, donate to or bid at the silent auction. So if you have something amazing, a gift certificate, you would bake somebody's birthday cake. I mean, just whatever you think let us know and also please come and buy something okay number three offer to take a bag of leftovers afterward either saturday afternoon or even sunday morning there might be a few things left over that didn't get purchased 
We have Hope Rehabilitation Services coming Saturday afternoon to pick up most of the stuff. There might be a few bags of leftovers. So if you are able, please grab a bag of leftovers and take them to Goodwill. Number two, please call us if you have any questions. Kendra and I, or Janet or Michelle. And number one, please get ready to have a great time on the 14th. <laughs> Nicely done. Exciting, huh? By the way, don't you want to bag that energy? Wow, awesome. So please stand if you're able for our first. Oh, one more announcement. Okay. I love it. <laughs> Good morning. Um, for those of you who don't, I think everybody knows me. So, um, As director of the Handbells, I'm pleased to announce that we're starting our new season. Our first rehearsal is this next Tuesday night. But what I'm here to do is talk about those of you that have not been playing with us, or may have and haven't recently, we're going to have a bell academy. We want more people to play handbells. So on the following Tuesday, that would be the 10th, at 6.45, we're gonna have a welcome, meet and greet. Here's what a bell looks like. We'd like you to come and just talk to us about it. No commitment, I'm not gonna sign you up and say you gotta play on this date or anything like that, or assign you a big bell. Might assign you a little bell. But, there, I, oh. Are the bells too loud? How about chimes? Much nicer. We can teach you those too. But we want you to come and find out. I put my address, email address on the, the handout. I also, if you'll come see me at the fellowship hour, I have little cards that have information about the Handbell Academy. Please consider it. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. How, how wonderful. The bells are back. They were off for the summer, so chancel choir. So this is great. Y'all ready to sing? Please stand if you're able for our first hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Please be seated. So at this time, we're going to be having communion together. And the way this is done in the Methodist Church is communion is an open table. All are invited to join in at Christ's table. It is your choice if you would like to participate. And so our elements are bread and grape juice, uh, representing, of course, bread and also uh, the blood of Christ. And if you're in person, the way we do communion is I'll invite you to come forward or into the uh, middle aisle and the communion stewards will provide you uh, your bread and grape juice. And from there, just go back to your pew and be in prayer and take your elements. If you are online, I invite you to find any food or any beverage that you would like to use for communion. And at a certain time, I will bless you and the partaking of these elements. All right. On the night Jesus gave Himself up for us, He took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to His disciples and said, take, eat, this is My body given for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. And when the supper was over, He took the cup and again gave thanks to God gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink from it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving and proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, growing and giving through his love. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us be in prayer. Gracious and loving Lord, as we come before you, we recognize our need for your grace and mercy. We have fallen short in loving you and loving our neighbors as you have shown us. We have often followed the rebelliousness of our hearts away from you. We thank you because your love brings us back to you, no matter how far we have wandered off. As you affirm your love for us today, place in us the confidence of knowing that you are present with us in life. Pour out your Spirit on us, here and upon these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and in the drinking of this cup, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world. Amen. At this time, I invite our communion stewards to please come forward. This time I also invite our folks that are online to please take their food and their beverage. Okay, online folks, please take your food, the body of Christ given for you. Go ahead and partake. And beverage, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. All right, for the folks that are in person, uh, please come to the middle aisle 
and uh, receive your elements. given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us continue in prayer. Eternal God, we give You thanks that in this simple and yet profound act, You remind us of Your great love for us. Through this table of bread and cup, we look to our future with hope. We are reminded that our past lies behind us, that Your grace has overcome our fears and our failings. Through Christ's great love, we need not be afraid of all that lies before us. Through Christ's gracious meal, we are renewed and restored. In the new life we have with you, grant us the strength to go out in the world and give ourselves for others in the same way you have given yourself for us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time, I'm going to lead us in a pastoral prayer. This pastoral prayer comes from the Methodist Church for Labor Day. And so, of course, quite appropriate. And then following that, we'll all join in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, ever-creating God. In your image, our lives are made. In your glory, we offer all the work of our hearts and hands and minds. Blessed are you, O God, now and forever. Blessed are you whose work is repaid, for by your work and by the payment you receive, your lives and the lives of others around you and around the world are blessed. We thank God for you day by day. 
Blessed are you whose work is unpaid, who offer what you can to enrich the lives of others through time, talents, skill, strength, and love. We praise God for your generous labor. Blessed are you who seek work but have not found it, or whose work now is not yet what it may be, yet still you seek that your gifts may be shared more fully. We praise God for your diligent seeking and pray you may soon find. Yours is the glory in their labors. Yours be the glory in all our lives. As you taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The only time I get to be on the microphone. There we go. Okay. You guys are all lined up. I'm going to come down here so I can see you. Hi. Good morning. Um, do you guys know what all this is? Wipes. Yes, sanitizer. Yes. Hand sanitizer. People, well, after COVID, everybody was using, I mean, I carried probably this size in my purse. And you had wipes, and then every time you walked into a classroom, you were washing your hands and wiping up and making sure you were all clean, right? Shall we do that right now? Here, let's all, let's all wash our hands. Let's all wash our hands. Here. There we go. Oh, you'd rather use this? Okay. Well. <laughs> I can't open it. <laughs> we'll all just wash our hands. Okay. Now that we have clean hands, we should, we're, oh. And we clean up. Awesome. Here, you can put your dirty one in there. There we go. Well, the Bible tells us about some Pharisees who came to see Jesus. And they kind of like to be bossy about rules. Don't do this. You have to do this and all that. You know. Well, and they said, we've noticed some of your disciples eating without washing their hands. <gasps> Goodness me, do you always wash your hands before you eat? Like every time? Do you forget every so often? No, Reese is looking at me like, okay, yeah, maybe sometimes. Well, why don't they follow the tradition of washing their hands before they eat? The Pharisees were asking. Because it's boring? Because it's boring? <laughs> or maybe you're just really, really hungry. And it's like, oh, food. Well, Jesus called all of the people around and said, all of you listen to me. It's not what goes into your body that makes you unclean. It's the bad words that come out of your mouth that make us unclean. Um, like, and the unclean feelings in your heart if you are mean or greedy or cheating or jealous of somebody, this is what makes you unclean. It's not eating with dirty hands. So the Pharisees were more worried about having clean hands than they were about having a clean heart. Can you guys think of anything we can do to have a clean heart, to make our heart nice and clean? 
Always apologize, great one. Can anyone else think of some? Play with them, oh, being a friend. That is perfect. Think about if you even, sometimes you may do something like not wash your hands before and you just didn't realize it, but if you say you're sorry or think about it or play with someone or just be kind. Yes, so those are a lot of things we can do to have a clean heart. Well, we're going to go learn about clean hands and clean hearts in Sunday school. So let's um, fold our hands now that they're nice and clean, let's fold our hands and say a prayer. Heavenly Father, help us as we grow in your teachings to create in us clean hearts to honor you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for my, for my house, my friends, my family, my church, and my, my house, and... I think. And your brother and sister. And your brother and sister. Amen. Thanks. in the original German. So I'll give you a summary of what it says. Um, so this is just after Pamina has been almost murdered and has been given a knife by her mother, the queen of the night, to kill Sarastro. And Sarastro comes in and saves her and she's pleading to him that, oh, please forgive my mother for you know having wanting to kill you. And this is Sarastro consoling her and saying, Within these hollowed walls, there is no vengeance or hate, and we do not need to do unto others as um, in an injurious way. So.
Freund vergibt. blessing and gift for us. Thank you. All right, this time we're going to have our offering. This is a time when we can give back a portion of the generous gifts that God has given all of us. So if you're in person, uh, we have an offering plate that is in the entryway of the church, and then in a moment we'll have an offering plate brought forward during our doxology by our usher that will be on the altar. And so uh, invite you after service is over if you would like to provide a gift in person you can do so in that manner also though we have online giving for those that are online or would like to give in that fashion you can see on the screen that is the link to our online giving or you can go to our website and under the giving section it'll take you to that link also all right uh, please stand if you're able for our doxology Gracious and loving Lord, we ask for your blessing upon these gifts that we bring for your church. We also ask for you to continue to provide us guidance to support, use these gifts to support our ministries to grow in faith, whether we are a child, a youth, or an adult. And also guide us to continue to use these gifts to take care of those in need in our community and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. working on it sorry <laughs> hey, try that now just hello there oh. we go oh there we okay. go okay ah there we go <laughs> praise god <laughs> today's scripture reading is from the gospel of mark chapter 7 now when the pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from jerusalem gathered around him 
they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. The word of God for the people of God. So the number of folks in Santa Clara County that live outdoors is huge. Oh, just disappeared. There we go. In fact, Santa Clara County every other year does a survey. And the last survey, just over 9,900 folks lived outdoors. If that wasn't enough, well, lived without, live, were unhoused. If that wasn't enough, though, of those unhoused, only 25% could be in shelter here in Santa Clara, and 75% live outdoors. You're going to see in a moment, the reason being is we don't have enough shelter. Okay? So, We've all seen encampments around our neighborhood. Those are folks that that's their home. Catherine Kaminsky, acting director of the Santa Clara County Office of Supportive Housing, explains homelessness is simply too large to handle under current conditions because there aren't enough resources and shelters fill up. She said the county is working on expanding shelter services. So they're admitting they're, it's a challenge. They not only don't have enough shelter available for our folks outdoors, but they also don't have the support, the staffing, and you're gonna see based on some comments, the ramifications of that are pretty difficult. This is uh, a person that is unhoused, Susan Colley, 59, she has been unhoused for approximately five and a half years at Santa Clara, in Santa Clara County. She, oh, hang on. She prefers not to use shelters due to problems of theft, fights, pest, and disease. And you're like, okay, why? Well, you heard earlier with Catherine's comment, 
not enough resources to be able to support the shelters. And then further, a shelter is also a challenge as there aren't enough shelters to rely, have a reliable bed each night. So you can imagine, because of this situation, folks choose to do encampment because they know that they, they all have belongings that they want to have with them. And if they don't know if a shelter is going to be available or not, can you imagine shuttling back and forth between, right? Not knowing if you'll have, along with the fact being more comfortable in an encampment just because the county is struggling with being able to provide the services. This is difficult, would you agree? This is tough. Well, fortunately, our weather here in California is a Mediterra Mediterranean climate it's temperate such that most of the year, quite good to be outside. Would you agree we had some pretty hot summers, past few summers? That'd be difficult, wouldn't it? Winter. We, we didn't have rain for many years. Are we getting rain now? Oh, yeah. We are getting rain, right? Did you notice that with our rain... It's pretty cold these days with the rain. This past winter, it became very cold. In fact, the past many winters, eh, climate change, more extreme, possibly, right? All right. So the CDC lets us know that you don't have to have freezing cold to have a problem. According to the CDC, hypothermia and frostbite are the most common related problems. Uh, when exposed to cold temperatures, your body loses heat and therefore problems appear. Uh, hypothermia is normally associated with very cold temperatures, but the CDC says it can, concur, can occur even at cool temperatures of 40 degrees, especially if there is rain and sweat. Huh. Do we get snow very often? No. We really don't. In the mountains, yes, but not here. So we're not freezing, per se, here. Would we get in the 40s? Yeah. If you're in, in an encampment, it's in the 40s, and you're day after day in rain, right? This could be quite difficult. And then the last piece here is an unhoused person explained the winters and the rains were definitely the hardest of course, because you're so cold and you're so wet. She also had to escape from fires that started inside her tent that she was trying to warm up. You can imagine, right? Okay. I have a, a friend I met a number of years ago, and uh, he, he's located in Los Gatos. He... Uh, goes to St. Mary's Catholic Church in Los Gatos. And last winter, as the rain started to come, he, he mentioned to me, he said, so Jay, have you been along Los Gatos Creek Trail? I said, well, not really. And he goes, well, I walk and sometimes run that trail. And he said, uh, with the rain, the folks that are in the encampment I'm really concerned about, and so are some the parishioners. Um, he said, it's super cold right now, and the rain just continues. And then he shared with me, he said, a few years ago, we, we had folks in an encampment in that area that passed away, died from hypothermia. Oh my. I went, wow. Had not put that together that that's how dangerous and serious it is. So, would you agree we live in a pretty affluent area? Yeah, pretty, pretty affluent. Top in the U.S. and around the world, for sure. Um, and, and so, it's hard to hear that we've got folks that are in that kind of danger, right? And... Yeah, what do you do about it? 
how, how do we take care of others, love our neighbor in that situation? Well, our scripture today guides us. Because as we heard, our scripture, so Jesus is with the Pharisees, Jewish leaders, a sect that uh, um, is giving Jesus a hard time. And the hard time giving is, is that notice, the Pharisees noticed that the uh, disciples weren't doing diligently the washing of hands, etc. Now, you need to know that the washing of hands, it's ceremonial, okay? And it's not just washing, it is litur- liturgy and prayerful, which, which, which a good thing, right? It takes time, but then you notice it goes further, and the Pharisees say, and you're, you're not washing the cups and the bowls and the plates and the pots and the beds and... Huh. This isn't about sanitary. This is about the Pharisees feeling this is how you become sacred of what goes in your body. And of course, as we know, Jesus has called out that his disciples that are out doing good in the world, instead of sometimes not doing all of this that takes quite a bit of time, to do all of this ceremonial, Jesus calls it out and says, hypocrites, that is a human tradition you've created to concern yourself with the sacredness of your body and what goes in when what's much more important is what comes from your heart. That it's not about worrying about what goes in. It's the words and deeds that come from your heart. Now, Jesus gives some examples of things that you want to stay away from that he says are not from the heart. Adultery, murder, deceitfulness, slander. Oh my, right? Those are things you want to stay away from. There was one too that was mentioned which was avarice. Avarice is extreme greed. It kind of fits into what we're talking about here quite a bit. Because is it intentional? I don't think so. Intentional as in we're a well-to-do society. But we have the resources to take care of folks, right? But, so it's not intentional, but it is, oh my, there are folks that are in danger, Right? Well, my friend I mentioned earlier, I didn't, I I met him in community organizing. Okay, goes to St. Mary's, as I mentioned. St. Mary's is a member institution of the organization we just joined a couple of months ago. And first off, I'm going to let you know that we're already as a church working to help solve this situation. Did you know that? You didn't get the memo, huh? We're doing it. Woohoo! Let me explain. Is so, my friend and his church that's a member of our community organizing that kudos to our church and leadership that voted to say, let's go join this, okay? Because my friend... And the few folks in his church came to the community organizing, you've heard it called IAF, right? Came to it and said, here's what's going on with these folks on this trail in an encampment. I'm worried about them. A few years ago, we had someone die of hypothermia living there. So the community organizing, we talked, okay, discussed what we could do, and then with his church, and community organizing folks from many different churches and nonprofits met with city council folks to discuss the situation. They didn't realize, folks. They, they didn't write that it could be this serious. And so they put together a proposal, a proposal to go to the city council 
to see if we can get some monies. And the idea was to hotel them, to put them in hotels during this time of inclement, serious danger. Not done yet. It goes to the city council. The way community organizing works is you show up with quite a few folks. There were 20 plus folks from community organizing, from churches, etc., at the city council. It was a close vote anyway. Because it's not easy. Budgets are always tight, all right? Every city. And, and, but more so than that, the city said, We have never done this before. Will it work, etc.? But I will tell you, the city council voted yes, stepped out, did it, and it went really well. And in fact, in the middle of doing the hoteling, where all of these folks in the encampments are now in hotels, the county of Santa Clara heard about it, and unsolicited on their own, added another 50000 to it for 100000 to make sure more folks could be housed. Hallelujah, huh? Yeah, loving our neighbor. But could it be done with one church by yourself? It'd be tough. So hopefully, so it helps, because this is not an easy thing to understand, but it, it is one where what we are doing is seeing... Oh, here we go. Moscatos, there we go. Okay, We are seeing our sisters and brothers in need coming together as a community, talking about it, and straight from the heart, looking for ways in relationship with those that can make decisions. And they did. Oh, and the last thing is, Los Gatos loved it so much, they went, wow, this is great. Guess what they did for this year? They put it in their budget to support folks that in inclement weather might need hoteling. There you go. Straight from the heart. Praise be to God. All right. And please stand, if you're able, for our closing hymn, Give Thanks.
Please be seated. So first, I, I do want to mention that uh, September 8th, which is next Sunday at 3 o'clock, is a community organizing meeting. It, it's happening at St. Lucy's Catholic Church in Campbell. And I mention it because we are going to be announced as a new member along with a few other uh, faith institutions that are joining, okay? And so I invite you, and you know, know me well, there's a flyer in the back that has all about it, etc. You'll see it also in the newsletter this week and all that. But invited to uh, come, and uh, you can go up on, on stage with me and a few others, for our church, to, uh, to be announced as a member, a new member. Pretty exciting, right? Uh, so as we go out into our week, let us look for opportunities that allow us to take care and love our neighbors straight from the heart. And know that when issues seem so large that by ourselves we may not be able to hand it, handle it, or even as a church, we're not alone that with other sisters and brothers, we can together go and help those in need. Have a wonderful week. Thanks be to God. Thank you.